Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 8. In this video presentation, we will, we will be looking at Proposition 13 of Book 8. Now, in this proposition, it states that if we have a series of numbers that are in continuous proportion, so in other words, a simple a to b is equal to b to c, but it can be as many numbers as we would like. And if we take the squares of the numbers such that d is equal to a squared, e is equal to b squared, and f is equal to c squared, and even take the cubes so that g is a cubed, h is b cubed, and k is c cubed, then d is to e as e is to f. In other words, d, e, and f, which are the squares of a, b, and c, are also in continuous proportion. And g, h, and k, which is the cubes of a, b, and c, is also in continuous proportion. So this is what this proposition is trying to prove. So let's start off we start with a to b is equal to b to c, so there is our three numbers that are in continuous proportion. And we have numbers d, e, and f that are a squared, b squared, b squared, and c squared, g, h, and k, which are a cubed, b cubed, and c cubed. So let's start with creating a number l, which is created by a multiplied by b. And another two numbers, m and n, one being a squared b, the other one being a b squared. And yet another number, o, which is equal to b times c. Continuing along, we have another two numbers, p and q, which is b squared c and b c squared. All right, now that we've got all these numbers defined, and if we use the previous methods uh, in other propositions, we can see that d to l is equal to a to b. l to e is equal to a to b. So we have that d to l is equal to l to e, which is equal to a to b. Much, very much in the same way we've done in prior propositions in this book. Likewise, we can see that g to m would be equal to a to b m to n would be equal to a to b, and n to h would be equal to a to b. So we have g is to m as m is to n as n is to h, which is equal to a to b. Continuing along in the same vein, we can see that e to o is equal to b to c, and o to f, O to F right here is also equal to B to C. And again, along the same vein, we have that H to P is equal to B to C. P to Q is equal to B to C. And Q to K is equal to B to C. So we have these numbers that are in proportion that are equal to B to C. So we have that a to b is equal to b to c. So a to b is equal to b to c, which means that the three numbers d, l, e, being in continuous proportion, is also equal to the numbers e, o, and f in continuous proportion, or at least their proportions are equal. And we also have that g, m, and n were g, m, n, h were equal to a, b, and h, p, q, k is equal to b, c, and again these two are equal, so g, m, and h is in the same proportion as h, p, q, and k. According to Proposition 14 of Book 7, if d, l, and e are in the same proportion as e, o, and f, then d and e is in the same proportion as e and f. So in other words, we can just sort of remove the middle number in this series. And using the same uh, logic, we have that g to h is equal to h to k. 
if these series of proportions are equal, then g to h is equal to h to k. Again, Proposition 14 of Book 7. So we have that d to e is equal to e to f, and g to h is equal to h to k. Well, what is d, e, and f? d, e, and f are a squared, b squared, and c squared. And g, h, and h, k are a squared, b squared, and c squared. So thus, we started with a to b is equal to b to c, and we have shown that a squared to b squared is equal to b squared to c squared. And we've also shown that a cubed to b cubed is equal to b cubed to c cubed. And thus we have demonstrated the veracity of this proposition.